Hello, this is Slow Food Survivalist. In the following video, I'll try to revise some common errors in terminology considering ferro rods and methods to use them as fire starters. In addition, I'm going to test some putative fire scraping tools. When you think of a word flint, what comes into your mind? Most probably a device that can be used to produce sparks by hitting two items against each other. That is correct, or to be precise, that was correct for hundreds of years before 1903. Till 1903, the most common way to produce sparks was to hit a piece of flint stone with a piece of high carbon iron. The flint acted as a blade, which shaved microscopic pieces of iron from the fire striker, aka fire steel. So the source of the sparks was the striking iron and the tool for separating pyrophoric pieces of iron from it, which can be seen as sparks when the iron burns in contact with the oxygen of the air, was the flintstone. In 1903 everything changed, when an Austrian scientist Carl F. Auer from Wellsbach invented an alloy, which contained about 70% of cerium and about 30% of iron, and called it ferrocerium. Ferrocerium was capable of producing much more hot and intense sparks than the good old striking iron. Since 1903, a lot of development has happened, and modern ferrocerium rods contain on average about 40% of cerium, 20% of iron, 20% of lanthanum, and rest of it some other rare earth metals such as neodymium, and in addition some magnesium. Anyway, 1903 was the point when it all went wrong with terminology. People began to call ferrocerium a flint. That is kind of understandable, because for a couple of thousand years, something able to produce sparks when struck with the striking iron was called the flint. However, despite the fact that striking a ferrocerium rod with a piece of iron produces an intense shower of sparks, one should not call the ferrocerium rod a flint. It has absolutely nothing to do with flint. Flint is, as I said before, the tool that shaves pieces of iron from the striking iron. In addition to that, flint is a member of a group of very hard rocks, not a piece of man-made metal alloy. In fact, if you want to stick with the old nomenclature, you should call the ferrocerium rod a striking iron and whatever material you are using to hit or scrape the ferro rod with, a flint. I have nothing against calling any spark producing device a flint. However, the general misunderstanding of meaning of words and history behind them has created hordes of experts who claim that in order to get sparks out of your ferro serial flint, it is absolutely necessary to use a high carbon iron treated with God knows how many different, more or less secret ways. When in the real world, you only need something that is A. relatively sharp and B. harder than the ferrocerium rod itself. For the sake of clarity, I would call the ferro rod a ferro rod, and whatever you are using to scrape it with a fire scraping tool. Now that I have done the nitpicking with the terminology, it is time to show how the ferro rod works with some of the putative scraping tools. A regular hunting knife, a stainless steel Brazilian steak knife, a stainless steel Fiskars cheese knife, a Victorinox stainless steel miniature Swiss army knife, a watchmaker screwdriver, a Chinese nail clipper of unknown metal alloy, and finally an abandoned drill bit. First, a pack of regular hunting knife. Problem with this one is that in order to shave some material from the ferro rod, the edge of the back of the knife has to be relatively sharp. But when it is, it works. Then something that, according to so-called flint experts, should not work at all. Stainless steel steak knife. Well, what can I say, works as well, if not better than the hunting knife. Next, something similar, 
a stainless steel cheese knife, no problem in producing sparks there. Then a miniature Swiss army knife, not very strong sparks, but sparks anyway. Next a random relatively sharp edged tool, a watchmaker screwdriver. Seems to work as well, not too convenient to use though. Then a file of a Chinese nail clipper. Due to probably too soft unknown material, no sparks there. And finally, my favorite, an abandoned drill bit. And here we are, a strong shower of sparks with practically every strike. The drill bit is very hard and it has sharp curved edges all along its shaft. Therefore, there is always some sharp piece of hard metal meeting the surface of the ferro rod. An abandoned drill bit weighs next to nothing, 7 grams or 0.2 ounces to be exact. It stays sharp for a very long time and strikes incredibly strong sparks from the ferro rod. Therefore, I can strongly recommend the drill bit as a primary fire scraping tool, or if you absolutely must use the old terminology, a flint to be used with the ferro rod. Hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.